Hello everyone, it's Becca from Becca Books and Bujo, and it is time for the mid-year book freakout tag. I've seen this going around everywhere. Every booktuber does it, and I am excited to finally put my answers out there into booktube. So uh, we've got 13 questions here, and it is basically just kind of wrapping up my year so far in reading. We're halfway through the year, and uh, it's kind of fun to look back and see what has been good, what has not been so good, and what I'm looking forward to in the rest of the year. So let's start out with the first question, and we start off with a bang. What is the best book you've read so far in 2023? And I think I need to go with Notes on an Execution by Dania Kukovka. This is about a man who is on death row, and we hear about his experience from his perspective, but then also from three different women in his life. He is a serial killer, and we know that from the beginning, but then we get his life unfolding, and it's like almost suspenseful. What's going to happen? Even though we already know he's on death row for the crimes he committed. It just has a lot to say about being human and the death penalty and what really constitutes someone to receive that kind of a punishment. But I don't know, you root for all of the characters, even the bad ones in this, and I just really, really loved my time with it. Coming in in a close second, I don't have my copy right now. My mom must have it. Mom, am I right? Uh, that is Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. This is just a masterpiece of a book. We follow three different timelines, one in the 1500s, one in present day, and one in the near future. And they're all intertwined because of one text and it talks about how words mean a lot to us and how they can shape us and form us and connect us all. So that was a really, really good book. Okay, next prompt is the best sequel you've read so far in 2023. I don't read a lot of sequels, but I have read three in the track series so far. This is by Jason Reynolds. It's a middle grade book contemporary about young students on a track team. And my favorite of them so far is Sunny. This is the third one in the series and it's the best sequel I've read so far this year. In this book we follow Sunny and he gives up on running and decides he wants to be a dancer. But what he finds out is throwing the discus is very similar to dancing. And so he stays on the track team by throwing discus. And he is just this quirky, real human being. And we get to see like him being his true self, rapping and singing all the time. And he just is such an awesome character. And so that's why I liked Sunny the best so far out of the track series and why it's my favorite sequel. The next question, what is a new release that you haven't read yet but want to? This one I talked about in my most recent deck of TBR, but that is Yellowface by R.F. Kuang. I gave into the hype. I want to try it. I've never read any of R.F. Kuang's other books. I'm not super big into fantasy, but I heard from someone uh, that this was maybe a good step into R.F. Kuang if you want to try out her fantasy. I may be interested in Babel, but I thought this could be a good jump into R.F. Kuang. This is more of a literary fiction. I believe we follow an author who has died and her friend takes one of her manuscripts and publishes it as her own work and takes on a different name and it's just about um, the publishing industry and how race plays into getting books published. So yeah, this one I'm looking forward to. Another one that I have on my list is The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. I really like Christina Lauren. I read, what's that first one called? The Soulmate Equation. I thought of it. I was looking for it on Goodreads and couldn't find it. I read The Soulmate Equation, I think like right away when it came out and I really enjoyed it. I just love Christina Lauren's romances and I definitely would like to get to the True Love Experiment. Sounds like a fun romance dating show. The woman goes on the show. She's a contestant and finds love. Sounds good to me. Question number four. What is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year? I have two. The first is The River We Remember by William Ken Kruger. I love William Ken Kruger. I loved Ordinary Grace by him. And I especially loved This Tender Land by him. 
this book, The River We Remember, is kind of set in that same world. And I'm looking forward to it. William Ken Kruger writes about Minnesota, which is where I live, and it's usually historical fiction. And I just think he has a beautiful way of writing, and so I can't wait to read that one. I actually got to hear William Ken Kruger himself read the prologue to that book, and it's gonna be good. It's about a death that takes place in a small community and the ramifications of that. So it's gonna be amazing. And then the other one is Heartstopper, volume five. Heartstopper. Uh, I've already kind of already read some of it, question mark, on Webtoon. I'm not sure if <laughs> what is coming out on Webtoon will be the fifth volume. I think so. And I'm loving it. I love Nick and Charlie. I love their love. And uh, we're getting into some deeper topics, I believe, in their relationship, but I cannot wait. I think that's coming out in November, and I'm really looking forward to it. Question number five is the biggest disappointment you've had, and I am going to go with another middle grade. I read a bunch of middle grade in March, for middle grade March, which is a readathon, and I wanted to read the sequel to one of my favorites from last middle grade March, which was The War That Saved My Life by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. And so I read her second book, which is The War I Finally Won, and I was very disappointed with that one. I so loved the first book in that duology, you could call it. It was a World War II historical fiction focused on a young girl who has a club foot and her and her brother leave London to escape the Blitz and they get put in this wonderful home with this young woman who takes such great care of them. And I just loved, I loved their story. And then I did not so much love the story in The War I Finally Won. It focused a lot on horses, which maybe had something to do with it. I'm not the biggest horse girl. So maybe that was it, but I don't know. It just didn't live up to the war that saved my life. So that was a disappointment for me. The biggest surprise, and I don't, I think it was a surprise. Yeah, it was a surprise for me because I just like ate it up. It was Verity by Colleen Hoover. This just like had my jaw on the ground surprising. I did not expect what was going to happen at the end. If you've read this book, you know, and it just was a huge shock. So that's the surprise. That's it. I'm not going to say more. <laughs> the next question is a new favorite author, debut or new to you. Um, I have a couple. One is a new middle grade author that I really, really enjoy. That is Jasmine Morga. I read Other Words for Home this year, and I also read the Rover's Story, which I really enjoyed. That is a more sci-fi book. We follow a Mars rover. And then I read her other one, The Shape of Thunder. That one wasn't my favorite of hers. I think if I had to choose, it would go Other Words for Home, A Rover's Story, and then The Shape of Thunder. But she just writes really wonderfully, especially for middle graders, but for adults who love middle grade too. So I am really enjoying her. I think I will read whatever she puts out. And I will definitely read whatever Allie Hazelwood puts out. <laughs> I have read Love on the Brain this year. I've read Love Theoretically. Is that what it's called? I think that's what it's called. And I've read the three novellas in this Loathe to Love You, which are Under One Roof, Stuck With You, and Below Zero. They're all like super solid romances. Love Theoretically, I did give five stars. The others are more like three and a half to four, but I still really, really enjoy them all. And so Allie Hazelwood is definitely an auto read author for me. The next question is the newest fictional crush. I love Daniel Grant from A Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I have just recently got back into Abby Jimenez. I read the Happily Ever After playlist a couple of years ago when it was on Anne Bogle's like summer reading list and I really enjoyed that one. I think I listened to it because she said it was good, a good audiobook. And then I wanted to read yours truly, but that is technically a companion, the second to A Part of Your World. So I picked up A Part of Your World, and lo and behold, it was one of my favorite romances now. Uh, it is about um, Alexis and Daniel, and they fall in love in a small town of Wacon, Iowa, which just happens to be the place that Willie bought my wedding ring. And so I felt so touched by this story. and. The love of small towns that it instilled in me and so I also just loved Daniel Grant um, he cared about 
his family history and about the impact he has on his community and I feel like that's very similar to my husband <laughs> Willie. Uh, he definitely cares about his family's past and also about the impact he can have on the community. Did I just say that about Daniel Grant? Anyway, Daniel Grant is dreamy and I guess so is my husband. Um, but I don't know, it just brought about this love of small towns again. Sometimes it's hard to live in a small town, but there are definitely perks of it. And I think you can find such special people in small towns like Daniel Grant or like Willie. <laughs> okay, next question is my newest favorite character. And it has to be Elizabeth Zott from Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Elizabeth Zott is like one of the only characters I can remember by name. You know, you read a book and it's like, oh yes, it's this person, but you can't remember it the week after you've read the book. I can remember Elizabeth Zott and that means a lot. Uh, she is this woman beyond her years. That's not the right woman beyond her age. No, like she shouldn't be in the, the time period that she's in. It's in like the 1960s, 1970s. She is this wonderful do-it-yourself woman. I don't need no man. I'm an awesome chemist and I'm smart and I don't need you to tell me otherwise. She says it like it is. She can fend for herself. She supports herself and her daughter and she's awesome. She also teaches other women that they can do what she does through a cooking show. And it's just, it's, she's such a great character. So I uh, really loved her in Lessons in Chemistry. Definitely a new favorite character. And I will remember Elizabeth Zott for a long time. Next, a book that made me cry. And this one made me sob. And it was definitely in the running for one of my best books of the year, but I decided to fit it into this prompt. And that is As Long As Lemon Trees Grow by Zulfa Katu. I teared up multiple times and then I downright sobbed at one point. This is just such a sad story about the Syrian revolution in the 2010s. I believe uh, we follow a young woman who has lost most of her family and she decides to continue to stay in Syria even though it has done her so wrong but she decides to stay in Syria and help the people that are there. She is a trained pharmacist but becomes a doctor to try to save people's lives. This book also had a twist that made my jaw drop similar to Verity. I mean not similar to Verity but uh, the fact that my jaw dropped it was just kind of like a twist that I didn't see that also made me like really sad. So yeah, it's, it's a wonderful book and a wonderful story, but definitely brought on tears. A book that made me happy. I just listed a bunch of books that made me happy because they were wonderful. Uh, Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This is a male male romance. We have the Prince of England dating, the son of the United States president, and it is just so feel good and makes you happy and love love. Then another one that was just so happy go lucky was Otter by Catherine Applegate. Well, there were some hard subjects about animals. Uh, it was just like such a cute otter and you follow his story and uh, super sweet. Then I have to talk about Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. Like I said, it just brought about this love of small towns for me or reminded me of my love of small towns, but then just like made me happy reading about their love. I don't know. And then the other one, that I actually have the physical book of is The Day the World Came to Town by Jim Defeaty. This is about Gander, Newfoundland on September 11th. And when planes could not fly into the United States, they had to land in random parts of Canada and a lot of planes landed in Gander. And it definitely made me sad too. <laughs> this book made me cry. But the fact that people rallied around America and supported anyone and everyone just made my heart so happy. The fact that true humanity can show in times of hardship and it was just very, very heartwarming. The things that the people in Gander did for those who were stuck in their town and in their community for a week. So yeah, this was just like a heartwarming feel good. Wow, there is good. In humanity. Question 12, we're almost done. What is the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year? Uh, I think I don't buy a lot of like super beautiful books like people have 
Illuma Crate or Fairy Loot or whatever. I don't buy those books usually. That's not my thing. I buy books used and I did actually get this book for $2 and the reason I find it so beautiful is because it's just so shimmery. That is The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. I'm a big Kristen Hanna fan, but like, look at, look at the shimmery inside cover. I love it. Um, I, it has to be some sort of special edition. I don't feel like that would be in any, any old copy of this book, but yeah, I just have been adding to my Kristen Hanna collection. I saw this one for $2 at a library book sale and I got it and it just so happened to be a really pretty shimmery gold copy. If you don't know about the Four Winds, it is about a woman in the depression. She lives in Oklahoma, but she moves west to California to find work during the Dust Bowl. So cool. This one is a good one. And I'm happy I have this shimmery gold copy. Okay, the last question. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? This question is so silly for booktubers because we always say all of them. But I will just touch on the few that I definitely need to get to by the end of November because I did a These Books Will Self-Destruct video and uh, I need to talk about those. So of course I want to get to all the books, but we'll just quickly list these. We've got The Bridges of Madison County by Robert James Waller. This is actually hopefully going to be read in July. Same with Peace Like a River by Leif Inger. These are both on my July TBR. Then the others that I need to get to on this self-destruct list is Catch-22 by Joseph Heller, St. Maisie by Jamie Attenberg, The Help by Catherine Stockett. Yes, I've never read The Help. I know, it's crazy. We've got this chunk of a book, The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt, which I'm nervous for because I didn't really like A Secret History by Donna Tartt. Don't come at me. Um, and lastly on this self-destruct list is Cold Mountain by Charles Frazier. Those were just books that I've had on my shelves for too long and I needed to motivate myself to get to them. So those need to be done by November. Anyway, that's the mid-year book freak out tag. Is that what it's called? I hope. I have loved my reading year so far this year. I feel like I'm in a groove. I have mostly been giving three, four, and five stars, which just feels good. I want to read books that I love, and I think I finally hit my stride. Toward the beginning of my time on booktube, I really wanted to read all of the hyped books, but that was like fantasy and fantasy romance and sci-fi, and those aren't necessarily my kind of books. So I need to stop giving into the hype and making sure that I read books that I actually love and want to read. And then I have great reading years like this one so far. So thank you so much for watching. Like this video on your way out. Consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more bookish and bullet journaling content from me. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.